Next up, we're going to talk about the player within record box. That's this area up the top, and this is used for previewing tracks, setting hot cues, memory points, and a whole lot more. Now there's a few different ways we can load tracks into the top here. Probably the easiest one is clicking on any track from the collection, from your playlist. Just give it a double click and it will load in the top player. You can also click and drag any track into the player as well. If for any reason you want to remove it from the player, you go up to the artwork and click the eject button. So the simplest way is probably just to double click on a track and that will load it into the player. Now there's a few different views within this player. We can access them from the drop down here. The default one is one player. We can also load two players. So we can actually have two tracks going side by side. So I could drag and drop another track in the bottom player here. Then we also have simple player, which is just a single player but takes up less room. And then finally, we have the full browser, which I showed you before. This just allows you to go through your collection and see a few more tracks than you would do normally. So the default player is one player, and this is probably where you're going to spend most of the time when you are editing tracks. So you can play a track from here using either the Q button or the play button or hitting space on your keyboard. You can also skip through the track by clicking on the waveform at the top. The bottom waveform acts a bit like a vinyl. If you click and hold on it, it will stop it playing. You can then drag it forwards and backwards. When you let go, it will continue playing. You can press the play button to pause. And you can hit the Q button to go back to the last Q. It's pretty much like a CDJ or other Pioneer controller. Now we also have controls in here for looping. We can quickly activate a four beat loop. And then we can get out of that loop by clicking the button again. You can also increase the size and decrease the size. There is a toggle at the bottom as well, so you can activate a more manual loop. So you can set an in point and an out point. And then when you want to exit the loop, hit exit. These controls pretty much work exactly the same as a Pioneer CDJ and the Pioneer controllers. Now, if you're liking this course and always wanted to make your own DJ edits, bootlegs and remixes for your sets, then you might be interested in another course that I've done. I've got a complete beginner's guide to Ableton aimed at DJs wanting to make their own edits. I'll teach you Ableton from scratch and I'll teach you just the skills that you need to know when you need to know them so you're not overwhelmed by it all. I've had some amazing reviews from over 400 students that have already taken the course. Check out the link at the top of this video or in the description for more information. Now we also have a control down here on the right hand side for quantization. If you have this turned on, so the Q is red, this will mean that anything that you do within this player here is quantized. So if you decide to do a loop, it will do it to the nearest beat. You can turn this off just by clicking on the Q and you can see it turns gray. And now we can put in loops in a more manual mode. So you can see those are now off the grid. If I turn quantize on, it will now do it to the nearest beat. We have options in here to also zoom in and zoom out of the waveform. And you can reset the zoom at any point. You also have beat jump forwards and beat jump backwards. It will jump by four beats and you can change that here.
Now let's check out the two player version of this player at the top. This allows us to do some very, very basic mixing. Now, because this is the free version of Rekordbox, it doesn't have all of the control, all of the performance value that Rekordbox, the paid version does. That allows us to fully mix tracks. With this one, it's more just a case of getting a feel between the two tracks. So the only mixing control we really have is this crossfader here. We're able to go between deck A and deck B. If you want to reset this crossfader, just double click on it. Now I'm going to hit play on the top deck here, deck A. And then I'm going to load another track into deck B. Now we can match the BPM here if we want to, so we can go up in BPM. But to make it even easier than that, Rekordbox has included syncing as well. So I can turn beat sync on, which will sync it to the master deck at the top here. So if I hit play, it will now mix in time. And as you can see with the crossfader, I can mix between the two. So as you can see there, the mixing capabilities on the free version of Rekordbox are limited, but at least it gives you the ability to see how two tracks go together.